we're going to uh, do something a little bit different. I mean, I know I've painted some sea stuff before. This is in deep shadow. Uh, it's on the Sonoma coast. And going to create a little bit more atmosphere. We got some nice atmosphere starting. When you get to the coast very often, you get a lot more mist in the air because of the ocean and it just tends to attract a little bit more moisture. And so you can really begin to play with atmosphere even more so. Sometimes you can really see it, sometimes you can't, you have to invent it. I can begin to see it. And let me explain what I'm talking about so you guys understand. Uh, we see a lot of, it starts to fuzz out in here. And that's because there's so much moisture as the camera's picking up, the, the light that's coming from here is illuminating the air. The moisture in the air and so we're having to look through that moisture to see whatever it is back there so it is not as defined as some of these things that don't have as much moisture and we can create depth by using that concept as we move back and that's what i'm going to do a little bit the very deep shadow not going to be as dark i don't want this this almost approaches this kind of darkness i don't want that because it'll feel too much like the rock and so I definitely am going to play with a little bit of value adjustment. The other thing I'm going to do today is I'm not going to uh, start with a line drawing. We're going to start with tones. Okay. So I'm going to use a little bit of turp. Keep a, a rag handy. Put a little bit of turp in, in kind of one of these brushes. So I have a little turp here. And we're going to start with blocking in shapes. So I'm going to go probably with some asphaltum, a little bit of ultramarine. And those two give me my dark. And if I add white to it, I get a gray. I can go warm gray, cool gray. I'm going to try and make it as neutral of gray as I can. And we're going to start with this. And again, my palette um, is kind of a, a, a light gray uh, color, maybe a value three, maybe a value two. So I'm mixing up a color that might be a value, say, four or five on my palette. And I'm making it pretty thin with some turp and just rubbing it around. And then we're going to start laying in shapes. We're going to lay the shape in. And it comes oh, about a third of the way over. So this is about a third, a third. And I'm condensing it a little bit. So we're going to go there to here. Bring it over and the shape a little bit more than half the page. OK, so we just rub it around. Hopefully, it's not too wet. The, if I make it too wet, it's just going to be harder to paint into. So we're going to start with that. We're going to take it down to almost the center of the page. We'll get a little bit of shadow in here. Shadow comes across as a rock up here. And all you do is approximate. You Remember, I've used the word placeholder in the past. That's exactly what we're doing here. We're creating placeholders. So um, because it may change it, right? There's a rock back here a little bit, has some more light on it, but I'm going to mainly deal with the shadow part of this rock. The water line is about here. This rock's probably a little high. The freer you can be in the beginning, the freer you'll be at the end. It'll avoid overwork. And I know a lot of people have talked about, geez, my paintings start to get overworked. Uh, overwork occurs. I thought about this because since people have talked about it a little bit, a lot of times you guys make me um, create, I shouldn't say make me, but you create, um, things for me to think about uh, when it comes to dealing with students and concerns. And with that, it usually happens because you, number one, you're using too small of a brush. All right, that's the first thing. And the second part of that is that you're um, fussing with that too small of a brush too much. The more times you sit and fuss, 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 the more it'll look overworked. That's just all the, I mean, the, you, you will eventually, and you may, I shouldn't say you will, you may eventually develop the talent um, and the skill to actually not worry so much about um, using a small brush because you'll know how to use it <clears throat> towards the end and hide the fact that you're making a lot of marks. But that is an acquired ability. Um, I have found over the years, if I go to a small brush too soon, too soon is relative, okay? But if I go into a small brush too soon, I almost always overwork my, my piece. And what I have found, I've got a portrait sitting around right now that I did um, for myself of a, of a singer that is overworked. And I was looking at it this morning, knowing that I'm going to have to go back. I don't have to, but I'm going to go back. I'm going to almost 
kind of stumble over the whole head and repaint it simply because it's too, I, I fussed with it too much. I don't even know if I fussed with a small brush, but I look at the piece and I fuss with it. And that just happens. So you have to kind of be careful of that. So kind of getting the movement of these rocks, not painting very thick. You can, you can hear the brush. If you, when you can hear that, that means you're rubbing the paint on, all right? And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to fight thick paint as I move into the other areas of the painting. So now I'm gonna indicate where this big shadow goes. It goes right here, comes down across the page. We have a strip right in there. It's a little on the blue side. Um, the paint was getting a little dry. I added a little blue, a lot of white, and some brown. Keep it a little bluer than the other colors. A little cooler, you see it? Good, that's good enough. So we're gonna <laughs> just get this map in. It's definitely gonna end up darker. But this is a good starting point. I can begin to see my composition. Which, um, something I actually wanted to talk a little bit about in the beginning of this painting is about composition. Um, composition is something you develop a sense for. Um, some people call it taste. Some people just refer to it as composition. But <clears throat> the more you paint, the more you develop that taste. Composition can be worked out in little black and white thumbnails where you don't, paint, you don't worry about detail. It can be um, worked out with your camera. But what happens is you, with your camera, you can't change placement of things. Keep that in mind. You cannot change the placement of things. Therefore, you're stuck with where things are placed. The only thing you can do is move to the right, move to the left, and recrop. So, uh, as you as you paint, sometimes compositionally things don't feel like they're in the right spot. The tree might be blocking something. Uh, it would be better for us to move to the right or to the left. So, all those are elements that everyone has to kind of eventually deal with when it comes to. That. So, we have our kind of mapping in of the design. It's almost like I did an abstract painting of of what I see in front of me. Okay. So we're going to start with that concept. Now, once I have these, and that isn't as dark, how dark am I going to go? I'm going to just show you right now. Normally, I wouldn't do this, but I think it's important. So I took asphalt and, and ultramarine blue, and I'm going to put it in a space where I think I'm going to have a pretty good dark. I'm going to actually warm the dark up. Just as a spot. This is not just as a spot, and it's going to go right here. Okay? So that gives me an idea. So you can, this is as dark as I can go. And as white as I can go is, or excuse me, as light as I can go is white, which is probably, so if you, let's lay those two next to each other. It's white and almost, so those are my two extremes. All right, so everything is to be painted within those two extremes. Nothing's gonna go all the way to white. You might have some almost whites up in the white water, but nothing else, nothing, I don't even know if this is gonna go this dark, but now I have, I, I was at least able to show you that. So let's start with the background. Now, one thing I need to do, one thing I'm really fortunate about in this photograph <clears throat> is the value of the sky. It's already light. Sometimes you get to value your sky and it's dark and it's gonna cause you some problems if you wanna create atmosphere. But in this case, no. So I, I took some turp, wiped some of it out, but I didn't wipe it all out, watch. See, I still got some tone in there. So I'm gonna take white, I'm gonna take nipples yellow, mix it right in with whatever residue of tone, and it's not much that I have in the brush. This is a real obvious blue to kind of peach, but really close value. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of blue mixed into that color. It's very light. It's lighter than my palette color, which is kind of a gray, kind of a, and it's about here. And that looks actually pretty good, pretty darn good. Let's, let's at least block it in. Now, I, the, I actually, I didn't take acrylics this time because my acrylics <laughs> I've taken to, uh, taken to school because I've done a couple of demos there on them. So what I actually toned this with, believe it or not, is watercolor. Wait, what? Watercolor. Yep. It just took watercolor, squeezed a few little colors out, and um, Tiana didn't even know that. I did it while she was, just did it right before I started. And it dried, and then I took a rag and wiped it around. And 
but I, I think I threw some matte medium into it, so it probably won't come off. But we'll just scrub this in. Again, my first layer, generally speaking, not always, but generally speaking, is a lot thinner, as you might see, because I'm just, you can hear me rubbing. So I'm not really applying really bold areas of thicker paint. So I want to kind of get this in. There's a little bit more uh, Naples into it as it goes that way. I'm going to bring a little bit more into that color, a little bit of white, maybe a touch of, I have a cad red light hue. Let me give you a palette, titanium white, Naples yellow, yellow ochre. I still have a little residue of a um, cad or Naples yellow, not Naples yellow, of cad yellow deep hue, uh, cad red light hue, a lizard crimson, ultramarine, sap green, burnt sienna, asphalt. And I actually have a little uh, raw sienna over there to the side. That is just a color I already had on the palette. And instead of taking these, some of the colors off, because I was working on this palette on some other set, um, I just, keep them on and because I never know if I'm going to use them or not. So we're going to, we're going to warm it up now as we go down. We're going to take a little bit of Naples yellow to that color and a little bit of cad red light hue. And cad red light hue has a deeper value. So what happens when you start using it, you have to add more white to it or more Naples. And that's what I just did. Ooh, that's actually a pretty good color. Let's kind of work our way down. We just kind of fuzz right back into that. And if, look, my value match was really good. Oh, I'm not just complimenting myself. It, I was just, I'm just happy because I don't have to work too hard to blend it into another color because the value is almost right on the money. So I'm gonna add a little bit of alizarin to that color. Maybe a little too much, but let me see. And as it goes down, I'm gonna let it get a little bit more red. Did you say you have burnt sienna on the palette? Huh? Did you say you have burnt sienna on the palette? I do have burnt sienna, and that was just color, again, color I already had on. I didn't add that color. And I don't, I would probably use some of it though, as I get into the rocks. So this is just the same blue I mixed with a little bit of alizarin and a little bit of, I probably, oh, there's a little bank. Oh, there's a bank of hills back there. You probably can't see them right here. I kind of like it because it gives me, a, it gives me this compositionally and I do I think I think that works pretty darn well a little bit more Naples into it I'm going to throw a little ochre feels like it could use a little of that Sandy and, has a great question so that the sky doesn't have a lot of detail like clouds why not put the paint on heavier to start with is it because you want some of the tone canvas to be oh no no that's a great question hopefully I'll give you a great answer okay <laughs> it's because I don't know if that's the right color I may want to augment that color if it's too thick in the beginning, I have to really plow so much more paint on it to change that. Cause I think I'm gonna go a little darker here. And I think I might even go a little lighter here. But so I don't want it real thick in the beginning because then I can change it without having to really work like hell to get a, a darker paint. So I added white and maples, oh, but that was a great question. So there's a little thicker and a little lighter down towards the horizon. And we just kind of blend it. Just a little bit. It looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to put that little bank of mountains back there so I don't have to worry about them later. And all I did is I'm adding just a touch of ultramarine to the color that I just used. So I want it to be kind of a blue violet, but damn near the same value, maybe just a little bit lighter, excuse me, a little bit darker. Um, and this is probably too dark. Yeah, it is. I'm going to throw a little bit more white into it. Okay. I almost can't see it. I don't even know. Hopefully you guys can see it. I don't know. Yeah, ask Anna, can you see that on screen? That change? Bit, yeah. It's very, very close value, which is what I want. The closer value I can make this, the better, because I don't want it to stand out. The minute, because as things come forward, I want more contrast in them. Keep, keep that little thing in mind. As things come forward, a little more contrast, maybe a little more color. Okay, those two things are gonna happen as we move up towards us. So I'm gonna go right back, right there, and that's it. Now we're gonna get, we start in with the ocean color, which is the next thing in line, really faded back. It's, we don't have a powerfully strong um, ocean color there, water. So what I'm gonna do 
same color. I'm gonna take a little bit of the pigment out of this by just wiping with, there we go, just a little bit. Uh, so, but I still have pigment in here because it's gonna harmonize. That is not a bright, clean color. So I can take white, I can take ultramarine, maybe a little bit of green. It's too pure of a color. And so what I might mix into that is some ochre. Ooh, that's starting to work. A little bit more blue. And I'm mixing it right next adjacent to the sky color because that's how it appears here, right? So why not when you're on your palette, if you already have this color kind of mixed up, mix the color that you see next to it, mix it next to it on your palette. So let's try, that's, this is my guess. I like the value, I, the color is a little more strong than I want. So I'm gonna, now what do I wanna do? I wanna knock it down with a little red. There we go, yeah, that's better. Okay, so now we're gonna paint in, push it. And we're gonna, we wanna come straight across. Probably a little darker. I just noticed the reason I matched it to the sky, but I didn't look at it next to the mountains, this background mountain. And I probably have it a little bit, could probably go a little darker. So I added, let's see how much darker I made it. That's better. All I did is I threw a little bit more ochre and blue into it. That's, that's how I darkened it. So we'll bring it up here. And this isn't real thick, but it's not as thin. And I'm looking right here. <clears throat> Laurel has a great question. Do you take advantage of the transparent character of certain paints, particularly in your shadows, or do you care? Yes, I try to. I try to. Yes. Unless I'm doing what I call, <laughs> I come up with these stupid terms, uh, thick and gooey. When I try to do thick and gooey, I don't, I just go for it. And I want everything to be thick. And that's one of the advantages of not working really thick right from, right from the outset. Because if you don't work real thick, then you have the opportunity. Otherwise, you, to get thin, you have to wipe paint off, which is not a bad thing to do. I don't. I surely shouldn't put that down because it actually is not a bad thing. Uh, I don't do it as much as I probably should. Um, as far as I, I don't know what I was. What the hell was I thinking there? I think I just made a mistake. Um, we'll fix it. Remember, it's only wrong if you leave it. So you make mistakes all through your painting. Unless your canvas moved to the left. Huh? Unless your canvas moved to the left. My canvas? No. No, I went a little darker here. I says we're start we're starting to come forward. A little bit more blue and ochre. That's basically what I used to go a little when I say darker. Now it looks this looks really too light. That's simply because I painted it too light on purpose. Okay, a little bit more blue into it, right below this rock, which is sits feels to me, if I look on the page, about a third of the way down. So right about in here, it's a good color. There I go complimenting myself again. God, gotta quit that. Mix it in a little bit. The ocean isn't one flat clean color, everybody. It, the water is moving, so you're getting, getting a lot of color variation in there. So. If, you're, if you paint it too warm, leave it and just kind of keep coming over it until and some of those colors are going to come through and give you what I call a really nice flavor to your piece. I'm going to grab a clean brush for a second, just for one part, just to get rid of this. Um, so I grabbed just a small gesso brush. We're going to take this over to about here. All right. And then, which is going to mean that background mountain shape. It's got to move probably to about here. And then there's this rock up in here with a little, little bit of sky behind it. Back there, there we go. That gives me kind of a look. I think I've moved this rock probably a little bit too far to the left. But I can change that, you can change anything you want. And this comes, this is one of the couple cool things about not drawing is you're, you're really dealing with design. And you're not dealing with lines because you're dealing with shapes. We see shapes, we don't see lines. Remember that. So when you draw with a line, you are doing an arbitrary indication of an edge. You're not 
drawing the thing itself. You're drawing the contour, a little bit of the contour of it. So this looks like it's beginning to shape up um, more or less the way I want it, but let's start going for some of the rock tones first. Let's do the big one first, then we'll work these back uh, because the rocks have to be, the shadows have to be darker than the water, but not a lot darker. But let's start with this. That's our big rock shadow. And I see a lot of, a lot of blue in that shadow. So I took the color I was just using, the water. I added some ultramarine to it, and that goes really blue. Now I'm gonna bring it back towards the violet range with a little bit of a lizard. And I kind of like what I'm starting to get. I think I'm not dark enough. So and Sandy, so, go ahead. I was just gonna say, Sandy made a great comment about fixing mistakes is a good lesson, allowing us to treat the attempts at painting as less precious and letting us go let go of anxiety and relax. You it. use the right words, less precious. Mm -hmm. I, I, I complete, I use that word a lot. Um, but particularly when I do, I teach you that quick studies course is because we do, the paintings are so fast, you cannot be, you can't worry. You just gotta hope your marks do the work for you. You know, and if they don't, next time maybe you'll do it better. So that's kind of a gray violet, dark gray violet color. Now, as I look at it, I made a mistake because I see it as more green now. So I'm taking sap green and mixing that sap green right into that color I just, which is darkening it, which means I have to have a little bit of light. So we're gonna go right back in here and there we go, it's a little bit more green now. I think that's right. So we'll kind of look for kind of the, the shape of the top of that rock. Just kind of there. trying not to make, whoever used the word precious, thank you, because I'm gonna use it a lot today. I'm trying not to be precious about this. And that's, it's actually kind of a hard thing to do if you're, if you have that tendency to be a real realist, because you want everything to look real right from the beginning. Why do I say that? I live that. So I shortened it a little bit. A little bit of that green works its way down here. Probably a little too. There, I threw some more blue and some more ochre into that. Let's kind of go a little bit, a little bit darker still, more ochre, more blue. Maybe a little bit of burnt sienna to kind of take the coolness off it. Bring it all the way down in here. It's a pretty dark rock. I think I'm kind of close. I may want to enhance that color a little bit. Now, as soon as I move to the right, this next rock is further back. So I'm gonna take white to that color I was just using and maybe a little blue, white, blue. So I want it to be dark. I wanna compare it to the water. Pretty good. That feels okay to me. A little bit blue. And I may wanna eventually, as I look at it later, I may see more violet. So in which case I will add that. All of these little subtlety color changes that you add, give it believability. It, it takes it away from just being um, a flat color. You know, not that there's anything wrong with starting that way, but a nice flat color. But eventually you wanna develop, anybody that saw um, painting that I ended up doing last week, saw me start with flat colors and I built complexity into those hills. Now, as this rock comes down, it gets quite dark, but close to that. So I'm gonna take a little blue, keeping all the colors I already have in my brush, a little blue and a little brown together. So I'm not going quite as dark as this, but I'm going pretty dark right there. And it's a little more blue than I want, so I'm gonna take more umber into it. This umber warms it up. There we go. And just put it in there and let it work its way up. So it kind of gradates. It also gives a little bit of indication of some of the crevices that you begin to see in there. You will see more if you're painting plain air a photograph will always hide some of that stuff. So you have to have a little bit of knowledge as to how to create when you're working from, from photos because you are doing a little bit more of an improvise. It'll never be quite as clear as if you're on location where you can really see it clearly. I always think painting plain air is a great way of teaching you how to paint in your studio. I was just reading, I forget, a uh, friend of mine, Ex friend of mine just wrote on how much he hates painting plain air <laughs> because of bugs 
wind. I hate wind, by the way. Wind and hot, hot sun. Those are, those are the two things that I really don't like when I do plain air. I don't mind a little cold. All I gotta do is bundle up. And wind is really a culprit. Wind, I, I think if I had to deal with, I'd rather deal with sun than wind. Wind can really be a pain in the butt. I mean, you have to fight to hold your canvas in place. So we're gonna come down on this rock, this rock right in here. It's a little bluer now that I see it. So I can bounce back to a bluer color. Probably has a little bit more atmosphere going on. These are cast shadows on the ground. Side of that rock, bring it out. So we're painting right here. And I'm just, I'm kind of remixing this color, reinventing a little blue, a little brown. Uh, going back and forth as I see things like now I'm starting to feel form back here. It's starting to feel correct, which is the way I want it to feel, obviously. I don't think I'm saying anything uh, outrageous when I just say I want it to look correct. Gonna give it a little shadow in this rock. I added a little more white. Oh, geez, I, some of that dark spilled out over. Look at that dark spot. We can't put a dark spot like that back there. You do, it's gonna wanna jump out of your painting. It's gonna look like you did a spot in your painting. So let's keep going with almost the color I'm going, keeping the palette very simple, not very colorful. We're gonna bring color to it. So I'm gonna try and come in with this rock as it overlaps. <clears throat> I see it right about here. Warmer, blue and blue and my earth tone. And we'll get a little bit of it here, a little down in here. I'm probably gonna throw some alizarin back in here later on because that, that's my darkest, Hot color is alizarin. And it'll really start to pull things forward. It's amazing. Even though you may be dealing with green grass or some, a lot of rocks, green grass are a little bit of a different story. But even though you might be dealing with something like that, um, you can really get it to come forward with a little bit of uh, alizarin. If your alizarin gets too colorful, that's a different story. There's a rock. I'm replacing some of these rocks. This rock's getting a little darker, and I'm going to throw a little alizarin into the color I was just using. So you can see just a little touch of alizarin, and that came almost forward too fast. So went back with a little <clears throat> blue. And there's some really neat shadows right here, too. These shadows. I would like to know if you keep shadows more simple and more uh, complexity in the lights or yes not. yes I will I, but if you leave the shadows too flat um, if you leave the shadows too flat it looks like an incomplete painting so you you need a little feeling of indication back in those shadows how much is really up to you the shadows up front will have a little bit up, as they're close to you will have a little bit more uh, information shadows as they go into the background may not have any information. Again, the closer something is to you, the more you see. I mean, it's, it's a hell of a lot of painting that is basically logic, truthfully. We're gonna go with this rock, which I started earlier with that nice dark color. It's gonna come up about here. I mean, working with from a photo though, it, you see detail in the rocks that are further away. So you tend to simplify them. I, uh, yeah, but I don't, I see more detail in this rock than I do in that rock. Or in that rock, that gets completely flat. Mm -hmm. And But one thing I will do is simplify it if I have to. You know, it's, it's how your painting looks. It's not how reality looks in front of you. I know I, I keep mentioning that. I mention uh, to students I have in class a lot because um, that's what they see. They see your painting. They don't see what you painted. They only know what you painted by looking at your painting. So if you think about that, just take that simple concept, a little bit more blue here, by the way, a little bluer, a little lighter as it falls behind. Um, and then up in here, still a little lighter. So if you think about that concept of it being a little bit more, uh, how it reads, uh, a, a, I had a class yesterday and I use in that class, uh, I use the word a lot, readability. 
does it read? Does it read or does it feel? Now, that becomes more important for someone that might be a little bit more realistic than someone that might be a little more abstract. Someone that's a little more abstract, the readability has to do with the design and what you want the individual to read first, to look at and see first, what you want them to notice later. Um, so you're, you're kind of choreographing uh, where you want, you hope, I shouldn't say you want, but where you hope the uh, person will look as they look at your painting. And usually the high contrast, high color areas in a painting is what individuals see first. And the beautiful part about owning paintings is you can look at a painting a year or two later and discover things that you didn't even notice the first time. That maybe that particularly artists will, uh, that you saw that the artist really did something really interesting that you may have never noticed before. That's just the joy of art, huh? Mm -hmm. So I, one of my um, galleries I was with for a long time, uh, Garden Gallery out in Half Moon Bay, used to have this great line that I would say to people, which is, is, and it's not a line, a BS line, it's actually a truth. And that is, um, when you look at your entertainment dollar that you spend in a year, um, we're gonna go back here, a lot, well, too dark. Um, when you look at your entertainment dollar you spend in a year, you'd be surprised how much you spend. And a lot of it is for a one-time thing, a dinner, a movie. Um, believe me, I'm all for movies and dinner. <laughs> but when you start thinking about that, but a painting, you'll have that painting the rest of your life. You'll have that. And not only that, you can hand it down to the next generation, to the next generation. And it's just, it's great. It's one of those wonderful things about art is that it lives forever. So we're gonna put a little bit, maybe too dark, real close to the watercolor, not much. I'm gonna bring it back there, down here, kind of a deeper shadow as it works its way off that rock. Now the white water is gonna help define some of this. So if it looks maybe too close to the color of the um, water, it is right now. Hopefully it's not gonna stay there. I'm gonna put this rock a little bit behind it, right up here. Kind of the same, but I wanna go almost just a little lighter. Notice when I said a little lighter that my voice went up. It helps me describe things when I went a little lighter. <laughs> okay. Fun with paint. Okay, so I'm gonna stand back. Okay, okay, I feel good about it. I don't feel great, I almost never feel great. Um, but I feel it's, it's doing what I want to do. I know there's a lot of little rocks in here, which we'll, we'll kind of get to. We'll put some of those in now if I want to. Bring this rock over a little. We're gonna still throw darks back in there. Now I'm gonna go back into the shadow, the big shadow that I laid in right in the beginning. We're gonna try and come closer to the color and value that I want. Um, I want it probably closer to that value. So I've already got these muddy blues mixed up. I'm gonna start with that. No, nope, not dark enough. A lot of ultramarine I just threw into it. So I'm gonna bring a little bit of red because I, I threw so much ultramarine into it. It's too powerful. Well, that's not bad. Let's, let's try that at least, what do you say? Because I'm gonna bring some more warmth to the, um, whoa, I put some red into it because I wanted a little bit violet and it went way too violet, but that's not bad. Okay. Um, this is why I like to use this brush. You see how fast I can lay that in. I watch guys in class. I say, you got to change this value. You got to change this color. And they'll take a brush like this. And I'll come back 20 minutes later and they're still laying it in. And, you know, don't do that at the beginning. Do that at the end. If you, if you need to slow down with those brushes, that happens at the end, because that's exactly what I said. Overwork happens when you use too small of a brush too soon and you fuss with it. That's where overwork comes in. Composition is design. 
It's shape, design, shape, color, value. And there's two ways to think about composition. One way is graphically, okay? So I went, by the way, I went a little more darker and more violet. Uh, graphically, what do I mean by that? How, how things sit on the page graphically. So you're looking at a two dimensional surface on the page. All right, and then dimensionally in space. So you're creating distance, you're creating, and that is another way to think in terms of composition. That also relates to what I brought up earlier about readability. How soon do you want someone to see something? Would you rather have somebody notice it once they look into the painting or do you want it right off the bat? Okay, so for me, I've got the basics right now of what I need, okay? So now let's begin something that we might refer to as refinement. Uh, I'm gonna put a little turp, clean that brush. I think I'm gonna lay this color in. Now that value is pretty good. It's a little dark, but it's pretty good. And it's a little warm. So I'm gonna judge based on that value. I want it a little lighter and not quite as red. So I took ochre. I took uh, Naples and I, that's, let's just try those two colors together. Now that's probably pretty close. I might wanna warm it up with just a little bit of warmth. Oh, any one of my reds or my burnt, burnt sienna, any one of them is gonna warm it. All right, that's probably where I wanna be. So we're gonna start here. I'll paint those shadows back in. So I kind of remember we're painting, painting shapes. So when you see me look at something at this stage, I'm looking at the shape of this. And back here gets a little darker. So I'm gonna add some brown to it. So I'm not gonna do this right now because I, I wanna come down in here, which is pretty close to the color I was using. No medium into this paint at present. This is where you can move things around because I didn't like the place that I that was sitting in. And then we come down below this rock. We cut up on it a little bit. And we reshape this a little bit, this shape. A little more ochre into it. Just feeling a little bit. There we go. Let's bring it down around this rock and then it picks up this long shadow right there. And this widens out somewhat. And that shadow is gonna go up about to here. Ah, I think it's gonna go up a little higher. It's gonna come up about here. And then we get a little cooler. So it takes some yellow, uh, Naples yellow and a little blue to the same color which is just using. And we'll cool it just slightly. Oh, too much. I could have probably just thrown some brown into it. It would have worked. Brown is cooler than the orange. So cool is a relative term. Warm is a relative term, meaning warm could mean uh, ultramarine blue if everything is painted in greens. Uh, cool could mean uh, alizarin crimson if everything is painted in reds because it's probably the coolest red. So a little bit bolder. So I'm gonna throw a little bit of, you know, I should have used this before. It's a damn good color, raw sienna. It warms it up, warms it up nice without going too red. So we come down here. And there's some cooler colors back in here, but let's kind of there. Standing back and it feels about right compared to what I'm looking at. All of a sudden, when I put this in, this now looks darker. You got you got what I said there? It looks darker. The reason it looks darker is because we put a lighter color next to it. So I added some more, what I did is I took some asphalt and, and I added it to that color. And we're gonna go up in this realm was just kind of, so it's a little bit darker and a little more brown. And then it begins to move towards a little lighter color. And then we've got some rocks, but we'll put the rocks back in later. And it works its way down. Then we get a little bit of a, pull down in here, go back to the shadow up in here. And basically it's just a matter of pulling this dark kind of color and we'll put one there. Don't, I don't wanna fuss on them. 
If I can do it with this big brush, all the better. So that, now I've got those two shadows, the one shadow below, it's okay, whoops. You know, I just kicked the camera. Let's play, kick the camera. Um, go back that way, a little bit here, a little bit up, some rocks in there. I'm just looking at shapes and I see a little bit of the light of the sand come over on this side of this rock. Until I paint the lights, I can do a lot of carving and reshaping of the rocks with the light color, with the sand. So I'm about almost 40 minutes in. I wanna start getting into some of the lights in here, but basically I wanna get all this set up and it's not quite set up yet. It's close, I'm close to being set up. Uh, I'm gonna double check this area down here, going back to kind of a slightly bluer shadow color. We're gonna take it and we're gonna go right about here, clean this up a little bit. Okay. And then, eh, still not there, but there. And then we'll get the longer shadow, which is a bump. And it comes up here and then it goes down and fades. And that feels pretty good. And then there's a little tiny shadow back. Not quite, almost. One more try. There we go. All right, a little shadow right here. I, I put a lot of these little blurbs in sometimes when I'm just fussing around rather than go back and do everything all at once. I'll notice this little break right here, which I kind of like. It's so right about in here. So we'll get that rock in there. It sits about there. It's a little darker. So I want to make it darker than the um, shadow that I have there. So you kind of just blop, blop. Put it a little bit back behind, a little bit of a couple of blurbs up here, another little rock back here. So we can put a lot of that little stuff in. You begin to add it as you go along. I have two things that I really need to deal with now. The, one is the light of the rocks and the other is the white water in the ocean. There's not a lot of that, so I'm gonna hold on that for a little bit. And I'm gonna to start to put in some of the lights. Have a little bit here, a lot up in here. Most of my information is gonna happen in this region, right in here, as far as the rocks go. Um, so let's go back behind this rock. Still get the nice and dark back in there. A little bit of a dark back in here. The way it kind of works its way. So this is our shadow detail. And as I stand back, it works. It, it feels like I'm adding detail. I don't know what the hell I'm doing, truthfully. I just, I'm kind of going with the feel of what I see the rock shape looking like. Now, a little bit lighter as it moves this way. So I'm gonna take white and ultramarine in the, in the brush I was just using. And we're gonna move white and ultramarine right into this arena, right here. Move it right into the color I was painting. And in doing so, we'll lighten it up and hopefully create a little atmosphere over here. Blend it in a little bit. Stand back, looks fine, happy with it, okay? Um, you see a little indication of light here and there, not much, not as bright as anywhere near like this, but I'm gonna take, uh, let's take the burnt raw sienna, the burnt umber, that's gonna be way too warm, add a little blue to it to, to mellow it out a little bit, so to speak. It's lighter, let's see what happens. I'm gonna, it's a, it's, nope, not light enough. Um, it's a matter of testing. At this point, we see a little bit of light happening. There we go. Just let that brush lay the paint down without blending it in. It's a little too warm. So add a little bit more ultramarine. When I add a marine, it darkens, so I have to add a little white back to it. And I see a little bit of texture in here and up. stands out too much, I will go back and knock it back just by pushing it back into the paint that's already there. A little bit of light here. I'm gonna bring a little bit of red into that light. Let's try it again. There we go, it feels a little better. 
we, I want to really warm the lights up more than they are in the uh, in the uh, image that I'm working from. So I just basically add a little red to it. A little there's a rock over in here that's catching a hint of light, and a little bit lighter still. It's a little piece of a rock on the catching it right on the edge right here. And down here, a little, just bare. Now, I can't even feel the brush touching as I put it down. I just, I'm saying that because I want you to know what I'm feeling. I think it's important. I think that's one of the things, pressure is something that is very seldom discussed uh, when teaching art. And that's something I've, I realized as I was teaching art, I realized over and over what I was doing and that, um, I was telling people things, but never discussing the aspect of pressure. There's two factors, there's pressure and the facet of the brush that you're using. Facet of the brush, part of the brush you're using. I'm just barely letting the tip do the work. Now, we're gonna put this in. I don't wanna get a picky with it right now. I wanna say everything with this nice clean brush, very similar to this value. Okay, I think I'm probably gonna warm it up just a touch. So I'm gonna take Naples and a a little bit of a CAD red. Oh, I'm going to test it first. Probably a little lighter. I'm going to throw some white into it. This is pretty thick paint, by the way. So I'm just barely letting the brush set the paint down. So I've got to stand back. It'll start to give you a feel whether it's working. And it, it feels pretty good. Except I want it a little bit warmer. So I'm gonna take CAD red light. That's really warm. A little bit of the CAD yellow deep. This is gonna be a little too dark, I think, but I'm gonna try it. But I like it. It's warmer, definitely warmer, which is what I had planned to do right in the beginning. Plan to warm a lot of the lights in the rocks up because it feels, I don't want it to look that cold. I want it to feel like there's more warm sun hitting it. So we're getting a little bit of the feeling of the rock. Again, stand back, it works. Don't want to fuss on it. Don't want to over, over analyze it right now. It's about the worst thing I could do. Um, come over here. And there's a little bit, I'm going to clean small brush. Right, I want it. there's a rock right there. And this cuts in just a little bit. This comes up a little higher. And down, and we're going to carve this side of the rock with the light, meaning here, over. You notice I'm not painting heavy, so a lot of the underpainting is coming through, and it's adding texture. And the underpainting may be the blue, it may be the red. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit more underpainting in here because I want some more texture. Okay, let's get back in here. Now, we'll come over it and I'm varying it between the lighter color and the more red color. We'll go up on this side of the rock, going up here now. Stand back. Okay, it's, it's starting to shape up. I think this shape can come down all the way, maybe a little darker, all the way down here, here. And then we pick up little tiny rocks. And rocks are fun, guys, because you can really be wrong with them. It's one of the few things you can be just, you have to be, you want, you paint the feeling of the rock, not the exactness. I probably have mentioned that about other things too. Probably more so that is true with rocks and any other element that you might paint. Because rocks are organic. They're not mechanical. They haven't been made, you know, there can be rocks made by hand. Uh, people do use them for their swimming pools and stuff. Gotta remember, those rocks are meant to look organic. So they don't feel like they've been man-made. I want this just barely to be in the light, that's probably a little too much. But if I stand back, it's it's working. This is kind of weird because I want this edge 
of that rock, I'm gonna go whiter. So I get more contrast out of it. Whiter with white, with Naples. And this is pure paint, no medium. Touch the cad red light. So we're gonna try it, see what happens if I can get it lighter. I think I did. A little bit more white, maybe. A little bit more red. Okay. And this rock too, that rock's gonna be a little whiter. So I go back to my white maples that I was using and I'm gonna hit, just laying thick paint on is what I'm doing here. So I'm just, you see, just kind of letting it, bear, I almost cannot feel my brush touching the canvas. I can feel the paint touching, but I can't feel the brush. A little warmer, now that I'm back up in here, I don't need as much white, but I wanna show the back of that rock. The back of the rock, you can see because there's light on the rock behind it. So we're gonna to wanna to put that on. And it comes up kind of in a weird kind of way. Now we're gonna go back to the color that's not as bright. If I, if I stand back, it begins to feel like it's working. Now I do want to get colors, the color variation into these rocks later on. Um, I want to take this, this gets pretty light back in here and warm. So I'm going to take ochre, the color it was just using, a little red and ochre, and we're going to come behind this rock right at this point, And it's actually part of that rock. I have a question from Laurel. Um, when you use just paint and no medium, is yeah. the result more intense, strong paint note? Yeah, it's both, it's more, you can get more intense color and you can get more intensity in the, um, the thickness of the paint adds, adds strength and the, and the opacity plus the texture that you're laying down, the, really adds a lot. And I, I don't think that's discussed is the texture of the paint can really add to your painting. So I've, cool, I've gone a little cooler and a little bit darker. Now, what, right here, back in the rocks back behind. I just don't want them quite as bright, but there is some brightness on this side of it. And that's pretty much typified almost with the colors I was using, probably a little lighter. So I maybe some more Naples. Let's try this, okay? Now, I like that, I just want it warmer. So I added some red. This, and that's just the person. That's not that I see it, because I don't. It's that I want it. I just want more, some more, a little bit more color variation there. And it, this goes up right here. Boy, that's some thick paint. And we'll kind of go with that back rock a little bit. So we do smaller strokes, bigger strokes in the foreground, smaller strokes in the background. This rock needs some amplification, but it's fine. And it's probably because I pronounced this so much, but I really like it. I'm very pleased that I did pronounce it that much because I think it works. So I'm looking at close value relationships, kind of like I did in the water in the beginning, but I'm trying to make that rock now. If I stand back, that rock sits behind this rock, which is great. Okay, that's what I was looking for. I see on this rock that I got a little bit too um, too generous with my lights as I came up. So I want to go back. This is probably a little bit smaller brush than I would prefer to use, but I want to go back and recarve. There's a shape of a rock there. There's some darks, and I, I can use that underpainting, that first color that I laid in as a color. Um, that'll come through here and there and probably work pretty well. I want to go pronounce this foreground rock by adding a little light behind it. And this is really busy up in here. Adding some more, let's try some burnt sienna into that color, see if that'll help. Not bad. 
probably a little warmer than I wanted, but not too bad. Oh, I kind of like that mistake mixture that just happened there. Let me get back. Oh, that's okay. That bothers me a little bit. Um, let's see what I can do about it. Just, just do that in the beginning. Now I get a little nice, beautiful light and a cooler light right about there. And it comes up here. Stand back. It's starting to come to life. Hopefully you guys can see it. I never know. Um, it's funny, I never know until I'm done and I look at it later, either in the last one I did, I looked at it the next day uh, because we had something to do right afterwards. And I realized I needed to do a, some touch up. So I spent about 10 minutes doing a little bit of touch up. And then I just said, it's done. Cause I, I could feel that I could fuss on it too much. And I don't want to, that's, a, that's really the last thing I want to do is over. I'd rather have it underdone and a little off than to have it overdone and wrong or and overworked. So even these little bit of warm and cool changes I'm making in these rocks are actually helping to give that rock life. So the, because a rock is never a color. I've seen guys paint the rocks and they paint them beautifully, but they paint the same color. It's like it's like you paint a brown rock and for the lights you use white and for the darks you just use more brown. And it just, you know, there are, every time there's a, there's a value change, there's almost always a little color change. Now, how much you want to play with that becomes very personal. Um, and it's not, it's not really personal. It's just how you feel about it. Do I feel like I want to play it up more? Do I, and that, you know, that comes from painting. That doesn't come from a book. Uh, taking a workshop, it comes from maybe watching what other people do. And you can say, well, I kind of like that, but look what they did. So I'm constantly analyzing. When I, if I watch someone work, I'm trying to, and I appreciate uh, some of those questions that Laurel's asking because she's doing that, I know. And I do the same thing when I, when I watch someone. Maybe I don't ask them out loud. I'm glad you do because the whole idea is for this to be a little bit interactive. In other words, I want you guys to be able to say, ask questions, say, are you going to do this? Are you going to do that? Sometimes you say things that I don't even, I'm going, yeah, you know, I should. <laughs> having, it's, it's like having that wonderful second pair of eyes. Yeah, Raul has a great question. Um, are you pushing the detail in certain rocks to make them more of a focal point? Or are Not you treating, yet. treating them more or less? I'm, I'm treating them kind of how I see them as far as the amount of detail. I, I'm not yet because I'm not that far. Maybe at the end, I might do it a little bit more. You see these rocks back here get a little light, but not bright light. And when I say these rocks, I'm talking about those. And this rock back here stays almost, it's pretty warm, but it's right about here. It's probably a little too warm. Yeah, it is. And I'm probably not gonna get back into some of these. So they're gonna stay pretty much the way I've laid them in. If I have time, I will go back and do a little touch up here and there. But for all intents and purposes, they're because they're in the background. And again, I'm, I've said this before, when I paint these, I paint them kind of like I, I would paint if I were painting uh, in plain air, because I wouldn't have the time to go in. You have to make those decisions, those editing kind of decisions as to how much information am I gonna put here? If you put too much, then you may need to put more elsewhere. Like those rocks look pretty good to me. Um, this has still got a bit, a lot of a problem in here, I can say, but there's water coming right in here. And so I'm gonna go back to that concept of the water, which is gonna be bluer. It's still, it's not real blue. It's still got a lot of warm in it. So I'm mixing blue and brown, and I'm gonna try this right off the bat. Probably, I could probably throw a little alizarin into that just to warm it up. It's just a feeling a little too blue. That feels a little bit better. Comes down to about here. And this tone helps define these rocks, which they need a little bit more dark. And now, as, it, as that goes down 
in here, it gets quite a bit lighter and cooler. So I added white and blue to the color I was just using. Blue meaning ultramarine. It's the only blue I have in my palette. Uh, and we're going to go right behind these rocks. Oh, that's just about right. Here, here, and move that color back in up here. We get almost some white water here, not quite, but light. But it's going to be pronounced a little further than it is now. Down in here, yes, right about there. Okay, I'm going to stand back for a second. I can see a little bit of that kind of color, maybe a touch more blue happening right in here. Maybe a little bit in here. That's, oh, that's a wave. Okay, I was trying to figure out what the heck I was waving out there. Um, let's get the shadow of the wave in. Okay, we got that in. So <laughs> I just realized it. I said, okay, that's done. Um, I'm making decisions, a lot of my decisions as to what to leave alone based on the time we have. And I would do the same damn thing if I were painting outside. I still use the time and I'll, I notice the light is changing. For example, I notice that I either have to fake it or leave it alone. Because you, if your light changes too much, it just doesn't work because if you know light's coming from here and you paint long enough, eventually light might come from here. And eventually maybe it, it's like a different painting. So you can't, you cannot um, stay the same as you paint on these things. So now we're gonna get a little bit of light on this rock here. A little bit lighter. Uh, letting the brush barely strike the canvas and the way the paint goes down is what's giving me my textures. And it's a little cooler. As I see it, I just guess it and paint it. As it moves up in this region, I've cooled it quite probably more than I need to. But it'll give those rocks a little bit of vitality. That bothered me that it was so light right there. Okay, uh, let's keep going in here. Let's go down in here a little bit. Let's see this, we got this rock. We need to hit the shadow side of that rock. Now I'm gonna switch over and use my other brush, one half inch brush. So I can go a little darker. That way I don't have to keep contaminating the paint I have in the brush. And I'll just kind of come in and go here, here. Paint it like you're painting, like you're sculpting. Paint it like you're sculpting this piece. You know, I'm just carving or I'm adding more clay. I'm carving or I'm adding more. And I'm going to watch this. I'm going to take some alizarin into that color. Kind of let some of these colors go and smear together a little bit. The shape of that rock and the shape of that rock right behind it. And then all the shadows on that rock. Now boy, but that really helped bring those rocks out front. Hopefully you can see it. I mean, I know it's subtle. Um, if not, trust me. <laughs> you can really see that. And that's, that's the saving grace of not going too dark too fast. I went to you. Once you go to your absolute, as dark as you can go, then you, have, you can't go any darker. And you have to just run everything together. So if you want to indicate information and it, within the shadows that are darker, you can't do that because you've already used that that value up. So a little information here, then let's start on the white water and then we'll move around. Cause we got about a half an hour left. It's not quite enough time, I don't think, for what I would like to do, but I think I can, I can make it work. Cooler, probably a little too cool. All right, it's a little too warm. So one or the other. disappears, finds a little light back in here. There's a little bit of light that strikes, not real, it's a little warmer than that. And it strikes right about in here. It just kind of 
I probably have to throw darks back in. I'm going real fast in this kind of stuff and not being, sometimes that works. You know, I'm, I'm complaining, but sometimes it actually ends up being better when I don't sit and um, dwell over it and say, is that working? Is that not working? Sometimes if I just trust myself, and that's what you guys will all find, is um, trust yourself a little more. Another line that I use to my students, okay? And when I say students, I'm talking about students generally in class. Uh, you're never gonna know how good you can be unless you put the time in. In other words, improvement comes with practice. Practice comes with doing it over and over and over and over. So if you're not where you wanna be, work more. Now, I was talking to my, Last yesterday, and I, we were talking about, I said, I know you have other things that are going on. You may have another class you're dealing with. You may have another, um, you have other projects, maybe homework type of things. I said, and then there's always that thing that a lot of times people forget about that we call life, um, which means uh, cooking or eating your dinner, uh, taking a shower, um, shopping for whatever you need. Uh, so all those come into play too. But if you can get some of those out of the way and put your time into just so you can really work, really just work hard, um, you'll be rewarded. You will be rewarded, I guarantee you. I, I, it's one of those things I can't stress enough for anybody, whether you're a student, whether you're a, just a person that is painting on your own and want to get better, the more you do it, the better you're going to get. Just because you learn what, you know, you learn what not to do. As much as you learn what to do, you also learn what not to do. I'm not going to do that again. That didn't work. It's the same theory. I've always related it to a kid sticking their finger in a candle and realizing hot as hell that burned maybe they do it a second time eventually they're going not going to do that again not going to i learned my lesson so that's almost painting in a nutshell you do it and you learn that but you also learn some of the things you do want to do again which is the neat part when it works it works you go okay that worked got to remember that one Yellow in the sky. If I use a little more yellow every now and then, it'll work. I mean, it can be anything that simple. So we're going to leave this alone for a second. We're going to work on some of the white water. Add some indication up here. And then we'll go back and finish on the tree. So we're going to go with white water first. So I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use this little brush for the white water. Good question. Yeah. Does, from Laurel, does the mid-tone color in the shadows laid down at first ever cause a problem going darker later on a transparent, on transparent areas let me think about that <laughs> i'm not sure um probably that's not a great answer but probably i just off the top of my head i'm pretty safe with my midtones where, where sometimes it can cause a problem is i and i know artists that do it do it well is where you do bright red underpainting or a bright yellow or a bright blue um, there was a lady for years uh, in San Francisco that use painted everything bright blue underneath. And sometimes it gets comfortable. I'm one of these people that I don't want to be handcuffed to a way that I always have to do it. So I try a lot of different things and I learn what to do. And one of the things that I've learned over the years that I probably over repeat, maybe I should do some things a little differently now and then is I tend to keep my initial tones somewhat neutral, somewhat neutral so that I can go back at a later time and enhance those. And I, well, uh, something I read many, many years ago in a book by um, Andrew Loomis is, and I was, unbeknownst to me, I was doing this, but it was really nice to read it and hear. And that is to work out of your midtones towards your two extremes. Your two extremes would be white, black, all right? But you work out of those midtones first, pushing yourself towards those. Now I see warm in the water underneath 
the white water here. So I almost took the rock color and threw it back in the water. I see a little bit of it back in here. Now, I'm gonna start, not start with as white as I wanna go. Take my white. I have a, I already have dirt in this brush. Dirt meaning brown, blue. So I'm using the white with this color, with the brown and the blue, and I'm gonna throw some medium into it. Uh, maybe, maybe just, that looks pretty good. It's got a little bit of brown in it, but we're gonna start really with a narrow, narrow tip like that, so that I can do a little, a few little things back here. And most people uh, would probably take a tiny little brush to do this. Don't. That was easy advice to give, don't. Now I was facetiously talking to someone recently who was really doing good. Uh, and they said, what do I need to, to improve this? And I said, paint better facetiously. And they looked at me like, what? I went, okay, here's, here's what you're doing. You're probably over worrying it too soon. Um, another thing that I've said, I'm saying it to a group yesterday. I said it to a group. It's something I've learned about myself. When you think you're done, you're about half done. Look for what else you can do. Don't, don't say, okay, I'm done. Look, what else can I do? Or what I used to say to students, don't be too satisfied. Or I, I know I used to say, say this, don't be so satisfied. I, I'd ask somebody um, to get up and critique their own work. So I, eventually that's what you do anyway, right? We're in a studio. We don't have six other artists or a teacher around us. So we're trying to, we're trying to figure it out. So don't be so satisfied. This brush is just barely touching the surface, but I want to get a splash. So that isn't as wide as I can go, but you can start to see by using the lights now, I'm beginning to help define the rocks more. And that's why it looked too dark in the beginning. We got another way right about in here. And that works its way over here, pulls down. Now, I am gonna to wanna to come back on top of the, some of these with more white. And I'm throwing, by the way, when I'm painting with this white, I have a little brown already in the brush, but I'm also mixing a little bit of Naples into it. Give it a little sunlight. Nah, I don't like that at all. Too fussy. I'll fix it later. There, get a little light right about in here. A little light, gotta shape the brush again. Sometimes I'll work my brush. So see, it looks like that, but it's very thin, see it? So that way I can just make a little, just by touching my brush down, I can make a little mark. I don't like the way that this happens right here. It needs, so I'm gonna, gotta, hey, I'm gonna use a new brush. I don't wanna screw this brush up. So I'm gonna take a, oh, say a number two. This is a little tiny brush. Uh, a number two, flat, white, and a little blue mixed into that white. And a little medium, a little bit more blue, maybe a touch of alizarin, so it doesn't become too raw, the blue. And all I wanna do is right about here. Oh, that's lighter than I thought. I didn't want it that light. A little bit more blue. Let's try it one more time. I will. There we go. A little bit more activity. And what that activity is showing in the water, it's not quite white water, but it's also a way for us to, and to show the edge of those rocks off and get a little variation going. Now I'm gonna go back to the whites, mix the white right into that blue, got another little wave happening. I don't have to put them all in. Hopefully I'm only gonna put the ones in that work. Now, understate them. 
coming out. Uh, let me stand back. Still don't like that wave at all, but we'll work on fixing it. Uh, not right now, because I, you know, I've been known to sit and fuss on something like that, and all of a sudden, a half an hour is gone. So I don't want to do that. What I want to do, that's feeling a little better, but let's move over here. All right, so I've got these two brushes. This one brush with a little bluer and a little darker color, and I'm seeing white, not, not real white water, but water that's whiter. This is foam and things of that nature right about in here. Goes up and then down. Got to be careful. I'm painting into wet paint. So I got to keep that in mind. When I paint into wet paint, it means you're probably going to pick up a little of that paint as you apply paint. And hopefully showing off rocks with this semi-white water, a little bit more light in the water. Standing back, it's pretty good. It's not great. It feels like it could be warmer, particularly right here. So what I did is I took some of the Naples and pulled that back into it. Right about, let's see, as it moves up, I added more white, but I want to go right here. Okay, not as white as I want to go, but now I have the whiter white. We'll put that on top of it. And then we'll, where this wave sweeps about here, that's a pretty good mark. But I picked up a lot of the dirt. So I remix the paint and we'll go here, over, down. And then there's a lot of that almost reflecting down into this water here. So it's getting a little lighter. It's the activity over here, I don't want to over fuss it, but I want it to feel correct. So we're going to leave it like that. The one part that isn't working is that edge is too straight. So I start, even though I started with that, we'll break it a little bit. Get a little bit more of the water activity. That's a little better. Okay. They can still go light. Now in here, I can take the same color. See where we're at time-wise, got about 15 minutes. So I'm really behind now, got to really crank. So if I shut up too much, it means I'm actually thinking. <laughs> um, it means I'm concentrated, doesn't mean I'm thinking. Oh, I like the splashy look that I just got out of that. And with this brush, it's easier to get a splash kind of a feel than if you use uh, like the number two that I was using because it's too precise and it's going to give you too precise of a stroke. You know, you want your strokes like to me, it's like painting foliage. You don't want to be over, you don't want to be too small because if you're too small, chances are it's just not going to work. So we want to lighten up some of this as it moves back. This kind of comes back here, splashes up again, right about in here. Water works this way. It looks like in here a little bit too. A little bit of white. A little bit right there. A little bit against this rock. And then down. And then there's a lot of semi-white water. So if I just take this color, move it into the paint that's already down there, it will not come out as light. Also, I can take this now, and as I said earlier, there's a little bit of white water right there. A little bit. Some of that would be really nice to do with a knife, but I don't want to take the time right now. If I have time at the end, we will use a little knife. A little bit of white in. <clears throat> okay, that's kind of working. So we got basically the waves in. Let's leave them alone for a little bit. we got almost almost 15 minutes. Uh, I'm going to go back into that foreground, the big foreground area. I'm going to go asphalt them and ultramarine blue and alizarin. And the alizarin is going to warm it up. The asphalt is going to be my super dark and the blue is going to neutralize it. So it isn't too warm. But what we want to do is find, uh, there's a rock right there. 
too too much brown. That's better. But look how you might have looked at that and said, boy, that's a really dark shadow. Now all of a sudden the shadow is not as dark as you thought. Simply because I laid it in carefully. I was measuring against other darks so that I knew I wasn't dark. So if I needed darks back in here, I could put them in. It's very busy, small rocks. I can barely see them, but I get a feel that it, the activity back in here. So using that dark color once again. So if it goes a little too warm, and that is just throwing more ultramarine. This is where, if you're on location, you can really start to see this stuff. But once again, camera will simplify. Or a snapshot, you know, a great photographer can get everything, but it means that you need a tripod, you need a time lapse, you need all kinds of stuff. And again, you get a time lapse and you don't get the, you get a different characteristic in the waves. You don't stop the waves. So, so much of it is, is just practice, you know, do it, do it again, do it again. Eventually you're going to find certain kinds of marks work best. Certain kinds of brushes work better than other brushes. Uh, you'll get better at guessing your value relationships. So we're going to start with that. That starts to work. Now, there's some subtle lights, but not much. If you put too much light in here, uh, what happens is you start to take away. Oh, there's a little light right here, I can see, from that rock. Uh, but you start to take away from the, uh, you start to put too much detail everywhere. So there's a little, there's two rocks here. One, two, there's the end of those two rocks. And so what, the reason I wanted to get this far is I want to go back into the rocks in the last 10 minutes, start to add a little bit more, make it fun. So I'm going to use a knife. I've got two knives here. I'm going to use the smaller of the two, this knife. Um, and I'm going to start getting thicker and lighter and maybe a little more colorful. So the first two colors are white and Naples. All right. That's not, I want, or at the very end, I want to be able to go in on the, um, waves. White Naples. There we go. That worked. A little bit of light on the edge of that rock. And back here. And maybe the edge of this rock. Maybe a little bit more. Maybe throw some ochre into it this time. So I'm giving it a little bit more hue. We're going to go back to this rock. We're going to go scrape down. And what the knife does, it makes a different character of a mark, depending on what, how you're using the knife. I'm just laying it on sometimes. Other times I'm doing more of a scraping, and that'll make a different kind of mark. It just play with it. Stand back. Yeah, that's starting to really, it's starting to sparkle more, which is kind of what I was after. So I'm gonna take more of that ochre, mix it in, and we're gonna go right in here. I'm gonna power some paint in, so to speak, kind of in a messy sense. Maybe a little back on this rock. Comes down. Let it, let it kind of smear into the rest of it. So we're starting to get it. I want a little bit on that rock back here. I don't want to call as much attention, so I will not do this as carefully. A little bit here. Oh, I kind of like, oh, nice. <laughs> Favorite mark in the whole painting. Boy, it's nice when you get those. I'm going to bring a little color now, brought some more cad red light. And we're going to start to add a little more. See how I'm going to see how far I can take it. So it's testing, testing myself. Now I am going to have to come in with a few darks too. I can see right now. And I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to come in with the same thing that I just did. So I'm going to use darks. And we're going to just take that, make an edge, bring it over.
you could take this as far as you want. So I want to show the rock so that the rock is different than the shadow that's on the ground. So I'm going to deepen the rock right there. A little bit up in here, a little bit more of a shadow. These rocks are looking pretty good. They're nice and dark. Can bring some more alizarin into them. Right down at the base. A lot of it is testing. How far can I go? How much color can I put into it? Or do I have to hold back? And you do that and then you go, whoops, did too much. Now I got to pull back. So I'm going to make this shadow a little bit different than the rock. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. So I've created the shadow and the rock and created a little difference. Well, I've got that kind of nice cool. I can add a little bit of light. Not much. These are in shadow. And they're just getting any light that's happening in them is what we would call ambient light. It's not really strong light. So it's just barely there. Okay, that's beginning to work kind of like this. Uh, I think I want to go back into that and even give it some more atmosphere now. And so I'm going to take my little brush. Oh, let's let's touch those white waves one more time. So I'm taking pure white. I already have crud in my brush. Crud meaning residue paint. So white and a touch of Naples to warm it up. Really thick with a lot of medium. So I can look at that when I say thick. You see what I'm talking about? Okay. Now we're giving, we're painting the light part of the wave. It's barely lighter, but if you look carefully, you can see it. One thing I used to do when I take groups on location to the ocean is talk about the structure of a wave, of whether it's a wave in the water or whether it's a crashing wave. There is a structure uh, that they have. And Understanding it, it's just that that structure isn't as pronounced as if you're painting a, an asparagus or something, you know, it's much more pronounced. Boy, there's a lot of more warmth. I could get a lot more warmth in the white of that water. So I'm going to try a lot of Naples into that and see what I can do. That's starting to work a little better. Uh, that one wave all the way in the back that I wanted, I'm gonna see what I can do with that right here. It's catching this part of it first. And then a little bit of a splash here, a little bit at the very top. And then it, as it goes behind this rock, we'll get a little bit. Okay, that's starting, it's starting to work. Don't like, when I did those mountains, I did them too dark. Uh, I might want to indicate a little bit more color variation in the rock and what I was trying to do earlier. And I'm going to go a couple minutes over. I've got, I'm close to where I want to be. I'm going to go a little lighter here. Create more atmosphere. Just blue and white mixed into the color. And we're going to let it fade as it moves across the rock. That's a little too much. So we're gonna take more of the brown and the blue, go back and darken a little bit in there, like right here. It comes over here, definitely down in there. Get a little bit more blue. We're just playing with the atmosphere. There's a lot of coolness that happens back in that realm. Probably went a little too far. I just stood back, I couldn't tell. So I adding a little blue and brown together and we're gonna come back in and add a little bit more of a kind of a tonal gradation as it moves. So we feel that there's some information back there. That helps a little bit, probably bring this up just a little higher and go back to add some of those warms back in that I blotched back in there. 
here. And we're just about done. We're just about done as far as I can go on a 90 minute. Or, um, and that's always the case. None of these, when, I, when you, these 90 minute paintings at the scale of 1824 up to 2430, or up to the 3042, uh, basically they're they're lands and they're what I would want to be able to look at and be able to go back maybe the next day and really take it to the next layer and maybe leave it for a week and go back and do it more to it. Um, it's just, that's part of painting. Uh, I don't, do I do that? No, not on these. I have too many other things I'm working on. And these, I, once again, it's kind of like my feeling about my plain air when I, when I do plain air compared to some people. Some people take their plain air and they go back and they, re, they really work it out in the studio. Um, I don't, just because I figure my plain air is a different kind of a look than my studio painting. And I try and be true to what happened when I was out there and not take it and try and turn it into um, a painting that I would do if I were working three or four days and going back and doing things to it in my studio. It's more of a, it's a, it's a real impression. And that's what you get on, in a plain air piece. You get much more of what, what you might think of a, an impression. And you really have to play with learning how to make your, those minimum amount of marks that you have the time to make in the course of a plain air piece to make them really work. Uh, it's challenging. It's yeah, it's educational, and it's something that I believe people that are serious painters, all of them should should do it. Whether you're in love with the figure like I am, or whether you're uh, strictly a um, a landscape artist, you know, even abstract artist uh, can learn a lot by just fussing around and working on location and trying to kind of come up with a feel of what it is you're painting, whether it be rocks, whether it be trees, whether it be grassy fields, anything like that. Uh, that feels pretty good. I kind of like the atmosphere I've got back in here. It's, it's working pretty well. I think the water, um, I'm gonna take about two minutes and talk a little bit while I do some, I think the water as it goes behind some of these rocks could probably go a little lighter, like right here. And by using this brush, I can give a clean edge. So you see what I gave that nice sharp edge? Same with here. I'm lightening the water just a little bit. And what it's affording me is the uh, edge quality on those. Also, I like the fact that this is laid in like this, but I might want a little more movement of value and color back in there where I can see a little bit of light here and there. A little bit. On the edge of that rock, I can get just a touch more light than I got earlier. So I could come back on this rock. This is probably going to be too light. Oh, no, it wasn't. I had a little bit too warm. Let's try it again. There we go. I'll pronounce that rock just a little bit more. While I'm that, do the same in here. Get a little bit color variation back in here. There's a few little darks that I could probably pronounce a little bit more into that rock. And that would be right here and up in this area. Whoops, went long. It's because I have both light and dark in this brush. Dark, I want the nice dark edge. Got some nice cool blues. So that gives you basically a pretty good understanding of depicting what you see and improvising in terms of creating a little bit more atmosphere. Um, whoops, I wanted to put some more blue back in here. There we go. It'll help that rock sit back as this rock also. But make that rock sit back. And then if you need to, you pronounce that rock more by just adding more light and the water behind it. So I might play with things like that for a while and see where I end up. And But I'll always get back five or six feet, look at the thing and say, is this what I want? Do I want more? Um, and that's pretty much 
where I'm going to leave it today. I see where I could go bluer as it, as this goes over here, letting more skylight affect it. Let's just push it right back into that color. So it's so a lot of little things that I would play with uh, over and over as I took a little bit more time and studied what I was doing. But I think for all intents and purposes, for the 90 minute kind of a deal that I do here, this gives pretty much what I what I would hope to get out of a out of a 90 minute session. So um, all of you keep painting. Scott, thanks. Anna, thanks. Um, next week, we'll try and do something a little different. I think I'm going to do a, another barn or something like that. I'm not sure. I found some interesting things to paint. I may do uh, some buildings in Venice. I don't know. So I'm just looking at a lot of different things. If you have anybody has suggestions, email them. Maybe I'll, it'll give me an idea. Okay. Thanks, Scott. Thank you, everybody. Have a good time painting. I will. Looks great. Thanks, everybody.